Synology DSM 7.2 has brought out some phenomenal features. Full volume encryption, complete bare metal backups and restores using hyper backup, SMB v3 multi-channel. There are a ton of great features that I was really looking forward to in DSM 7.2, but as much praise as I give it, it was also a huge mess of an upgrade cycle. I kind of have to take this back here and mention all the stuff that went wrong because genuinely I have had to put in a ton of work because of bad updates and weird things breaking other things since DSM 7.2 has come out because there's been all these little things that were pretty severe bugs that were not found until later on. In a lot of cases, months later on. All right, so I do want to mention this. This is totally unbiased review. I have a background in consulting with Synology. I actually do this full time now where my wife and I work full time consulting on Synology NASAs. Through this YouTube channel, people just reach me higher out. There's a hire me button down in the link in the description. And I set up a lot of NAS systems for small businesses, home users, everything in between. And I end up working on a lot of NASAs. And I also do get a lot of phone calls when things don't work. So my views are definitely a little bit skewed to I see the worst and the biggest bugs because if there's a bug, so one of my clients is more likely to find it than just you as a single home user. But in the past, Synology updates have been pretty rock solid steady and generally I never thought twice about them. But in all honesty, we had real issues with the DSM 7.2 updates and I wanna mention all of them just to inform people that yeah, there is sometimes a good reason to wait to upgrade. I am now at a place where I'm gonna start updating all my clients to DSM 7.2 upgrade three who are not already on there. I was holding off for a while. I've still got a fair amount of people on 7.1 update five, I guess, because it was just rock solid that I knew it was gonna be fine. But now I do feel comfortable with DSM 7.2 upgrade three. So that is my bit at the beginning of this video. And I wanna talk about all the different issues that came up throughout this upgrade cycle and we're going to start off with the release notes. So right off the bat, the very first one that came out, 64.5.61, was actually brought back. So this was the very first DSM 7.2 full release. And it was actually recalled for any users who were updating NASA's offline because it may just completely fail to run. Now, I did not see that because I generally work on units that are online. Otherwise, how am I gonna get into them? Because I do a lot of remote consulting, but not a great place off the start. And so if you notice that was June 8th. And so then after that, there was no update for anybody till the 20th. Furthermore, which was another just what's going on here, update one came out a day before update zero. Very, very, very strange. As you can see, there were a lot of weird issues where there were genuine problems with the update. And it did seem like they were just throwing updates out there last minute to try to fix things and which is not something you want to do with a NAS operating system. I have often said numerous times, I am more than happy for features taking a long time to come out. As long as when they do come out, they're rock solid and steady. A NAS as much fun as I find them to be, should be something that is very boring and is very consistent and is just not gonna have issues because fun is great for your computer, but ideally a NAS should be pretty boring because it's so rock solid and steady and just doing the same thing over and over and over again. So this is about where the real issues started occurring. And I started realizing there were a lot of little things going on. So I personally did an update from update one to update two. And I'm actually surprised they did not recall update two update two only lasted and was out for a very short amount of time because i actually updated to update two which fixed a lot of issues that i i had had but i accidentally destroyed all my applications because there was something going on and i had to update to first update one and then update to update two but when i did that i did get a little notification that said hey the storage pool is doing something you should wait for it to finish before continuing. And I'm so used to just saying, ah, heck with it. I mean, it's on a test system. And I said, ignore and continue. And I destroyed my apps. I actually had to completely uninstall and then reinstall all my applications because of that. Now, did I absolutely click that checkbox when I shouldn't have? Yes. 
Have I clicked it numerous times in the past? Yes. It is still one of those cases where there should not be something like that that can occur because genuine data loss could have happened there. It was a test box for me, so it was not a big deal, but that was a huge issue. But one of the reasons why I wanted to upgrade to update two so bad was so many issues were being fixed in this update. Right here, there were two issues with snapshot replication where snapshot replication was just not giving up memory. There was a memory leak in it. And if you were replicating from one NAS to another using snapshot replication, which is a workflow I deploy for a lot of my clients because it is incredibly valuable to have that replication because it allows you to do an instantaneous failover, there would be a memory leak. And so every single time you did a replication, the replicated server's memory would increase by a few megabytes uh, da, 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 until every single time it would hard crash because it literally ran out of swap. And so that was a huge issue that I was excited to update for. Then there was another one where one of the greatest features that came out with DSM 7.2 was a Synology backed mail server, meaning you didn't have to use your Gmail account and then have an issue where you got signed out and signed back in. So your NAS was not able to send out emails that got fixed because now boom, you can use Synology's mail server. Another really big issue where it's a great feature, but those emails were not getting sent for pretty much anybody that I, I worked with. Then some things that I never really noticed and did not run into. Then another major update had to come out in update three. And this is something that affected probably four or five of my users where for some reason, I'm not sure what update this was a part of. If you did something like a migration assistant where you migrated from one NAS to the other, or even did a hard drive migration and a lot of different migration methods, you would be in this very strange place where your account, every single time it would say, hey, sorry, you need to sign in to do this. But you had to sign in to sign out, and so it would error out, and you could not get signed into your Synology account. This meant that anybody who did that could not use Quick Connect, the mail server, or anything like that. Luckily, Update 3 did fix this, but there were a ton of issues that actually occurred where fundamental parts of the operating system were genuinely broken where that glitch meant that entire functionality of the NAS could not be fixed and there was no way around it. And that update took a month to come out where I had multiple people who I do a lot of migrations for people and things like that, who I'm like, this is a bug. I'm not sure when they're going to fix it. And these were just the things that I personally ran into on this side of things to add in even more things. There were a few really key SMB errors. If we look at the SMB release notes, multiple times there were massive issues where files became inaccessible, which is one of the worst things that can occur in my opinion. I'm not sure which one of these updates fixed it, but it does seem to be fixed. But I actually had a client who was on DSM 7.2. I'm not sure which update and I'm not sure which version of SMB. But what was happening was somehow on their file server, entire folders were getting locked through SMB because somewhere along the line, something was putting a flag that was saying, hey, this is locked for archiving. It may have been the cloud thing. It may have been the backup. I'm not sure which one it was, but I spent six hours trying to unlock these files because what would happen is the parent folder would get locked and then the, every single subfolder within that parent folder and subfolder of a folder and down all the way, no files in any of those folders would be able to be editable in Mac or Windows. It was a huge issue and I had to spend six hours trying to fix it. But I ended up having to find the terminal scripts that Synology has built to actually remove that locked for archiving flag from every single file. And it was hundreds of folders that were actually locked. And so we had to go through every single one of those all massive, very normal workflow of SMB. There were broken parts to the operating system, even though the update had been out for well over a month at that time, that caused genuine issues for pretty normal workflows, especially for businesses. These were not people who were using like Synology Drive where it's trying to do all these extra things. These were standard deployments that had those flags locked. 
And it was one of those things where it was a massive pain to try to get those unlocked. And so this was a real issue. There were numerous cases of these kinds of things that honestly, I'm glad I did not update everybody to DSM 7.2. I only brought people into DSM 7.2 directly who were starting off with me because in general, I avoid updates. So if I can just start with a regular version, I will. But there were real issues with this that made it hard to work on. Luckily, from the past month now, it seemed good. I've not had any major issues whatsoever since then. Everybody who's on DSM 7.2 upgrade three and all the stuff that came out in early August, like the, the 10th and before, all those package updates seem to have finally fixed everything. But I must say, as somebody who very much likes Synology and gives them a ton of praise on the internet, there were numerous issues with this update that genuinely cause outages for businesses running Synology NAS. And that is not something I would say about most updates. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. If you wanna hire me for a project, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one. Bye.